Hello, everybody. My name is TJ, and today I am joined by the Season 2 champion of America's Grandmasters. It's Monsanto. Monsanto, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm, uh, you know, counting down the days until the World Championship. It's going to be an exciting time, but still feels so far away. How many days? Uh, but uh, I'm not literally counting down the days. Oh. It's, yeah, it's, I'm metaphorically counting down the days. Okay, okay. Like, you know, yesterday 25. Was Sunday. Oh, really? Okay, you did. Uh, I made that up. I don't know. Uh, well, how you been since season two? What, you been, what have you been up to? Have you been enjoying the break from competitive Hearthstone? Uh, yeah, I, took, I actually took a break from Hearthstone and streaming after I qualified because I knew that there was going to be this new expansion and I wanted to try super hard for like all this time uh from the start of the expansion to worlds and i didn't want to be like bored of the game or anything so i i just took a break and i enjoyed it and i'm back to it and i'm enjoying it so far yeah and you know i i will say that you're kind of a wild card uh coming into the world championship i'm probably about halfway through these interviews so you know i've had a chance to talk to four other players who have kind of evaluated the other world's competitors and uh the consistent theme is people are saying either you're going to win the whole thing or O2 out of groups. Um, and, you know, some people, I won't mention who, have said that you're hit or miss with, like, lineup decisions. And the times where you do nail the lineup, you're, like, the, the favorite. Or if you have a, a decent lineup, you're favorite. Uh, but that's where you kind of, you know, lose your ground. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that that's accurate? Do you think that that's um, uh, a load of crap? What do you say? I don't know. I think that's that used to be very, very true. Um, I don't know. When I... So, so, I feel like the last meta, I experienced being really bad at the game. And then I worked super hard for like three weeks in a row. And then I experienced... And then I became pretty good at it. And... The lineups recently haven't mattered as much as they used to, like, the previous years. I don't know how it's going to be in the current meta, but it, I felt like it was more about being able to play whichever decks you decide to bring, like, as good as you can. Um, and which decks they were didn't matter so much. So if the meta ends up being very, very similar to by the end of GM, I don't think that's the case. But if it's another meta where you, you really need to bring the perfect lineup, then there's that's true that I'm pretty hit or miss with that. Sometimes I, I'm completely off track. Well, you did, you did bring kind of the uh, the meta breaker deck to uh, GM playoffs when you actually qualified to the World Championship, right? That was when you brought the, the Reaper Scythe Temple Warrior, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I did that. Um, I mean, that, that was just like changing what, eight cards to a deck that already exists? Eight is a lot, but, I mean, it was still on Rage Warrior. Yeah. Um, I just adapted it to the meta. I didn't try it enough to make, to be 100% sure it was good, but I tried it... But, yeah, I tried it enough that I thought it was my best option at that moment. And it ended up... I mean, it went 1-0 and got banned, what, three times, so it did perfect. 100% win rate. 100% were exact. That's the tagline. Yep. Now you just need a crazy thumbnail of you in a hat, and you got yourself a YouTube video. 100 win rate warrior deck. Well, it doesn't matter anymore because yeah. Darkwood bears out, but, you know, um, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Should have done that. Should have done it. <sighs> um, but, you know, kind of moving away from uh, maybe your perceived faults, uh, you are one of the most consistent players in America's ba in in GM based on results and overall win rate and just over like the last four years just in you know points if we want to go back systems um, but you haven't had a huge result right you had like a runner-up at a tour stop or the um, one of the big events uh, in 2017 or 2018 you've had a, a good amount of top eights but um, you're, you're outside yeah. of GM season two you're lacking that big win um, do you feel like you've already proven yourself to like the, the, the wider competitive base that you're a good player? Or do you feel like you do need a big win in order to prove yourself? Um, that's a good question. Um, I mean, good player, sure. I think people probably think of me as a good player. 
But there's a there's a bunch of good players, you know. Uh, if I if I win it, if I win worlds, maybe maybe that that would make it like look like I'm a great player, you know. What about that? That's a better word. Yeah, great. Usually, in most contexts, great is better than good. Yeah. Um, but what about a fantastic player? Is that on your mind? Oh, uh, I, I, I mean, that would be even better. Um, what about amazing? Where does amazing rank in these? Uh, a little bit adjectives? less than fantastic, right? That's in my mind, but maybe I'm wrong about it. What about tremendous? A tremendous. I mean, all of that would be better than good. Yeah. You know? All right. Well, I can. I, I just want to. I just want to upgrade from good to any of those. You know, okay. and that, that's the plan. All right. Well, that's a good goal to have uh, outside of like the huge prize pool for worlds yeah. and things like that. The goal for winning is just to be upgraded from a good player to any better adjective than good. Yeah, uh, exactly. Solid goal. Uh, on that note, um, we've given uh, nicknames to every player at world, sort of these tags based on either their play style, their personalities, uh, things like that. And uh, yours has already been released, so you saw yours. It's the Comedian. Yeah, and I know that there's a uh, there's probably a lot of people that watch that may not know you super well or like you know follow you on Twitter or you know, you know look at the YouTube videos that you made. But what do you what do you think about that nickname? Do you think that accurately represents you and your personality? Uh, I mean, I'm sure some people might know me very well and still don't agree with it. <laughs> um, I, I think I mean I I don't know. I have some humor. Some some people it's not for everybody. Um, but sometimes I, I think I can be funny, um, probably more than anyone else that's qualified to world. So sure. I mean, um, half of them, I don't speak their language. I wouldn't know, but like out of the people that speak English that qualified to worlds, that that's, that's probably if one of them had to be the comedian, that's probably me. What if we told you that the nickname, the comedian wasn't based off of your personality, but was based off of your Hearthstone play and that your Hearthstone play was funny. Uh, well, that that's that's your opinion. Um, I mean, it's not, but that would have been. I don't think my Hearthstone play is funny. My Hearthstone play is dead serious. Actually, I would agree there. I would say your Hearthstone play is quite crisp. Um, but yeah, uh, some of the other ones are are pretty cool too. So I like the the whole nickname system. But I'm gonna be playing up the comedian. Uh, what was your Twitter bio as well? I forgot it in my notes. What did Rodan say? Oh, you didn't forget it. I need to remember it. Uh, I it says uh, I'm a comedian, comedic genius. Okay. And if yeah, Rodan yeah. said it, it must be true because he is the yeah yeah. Fro Frodan Frodan proclaimed me the comedic genius on the Jam broadcast. So that's okay. now. I mean that's that's in my bio. That's that's on my CV as well. That's that's. <laughs> as it should be. Yeah. Um, and kind of transitioning to the actual event, uh, talking about worlds, um, in my opinion, I think it's the perfect time, uh, for like a big event after an expansion release. It's like three to four weeks after an expansion, like enough time to where the meta sort of settled, but not enough time to where the meta's like stale or there's not opportunity to find, uh, edges. <clears throat> um, are, are you happy about kind of where it's positioned, like, uh, timing wise? Uh, for the yeah. expansion release, do you think that that plays into your strengths as a player? Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's uh, I think it's pretty perfect. Like uh, about a month, it, it gives us time to figure out what's good. We don't come there like we we're not gonna go there eyes closed and like try to pray that what whatever we tried was the good thing. And it's not it's not uh, like you said, it's not just everyone knows what's good, and so we brought that and let's try to hire with it. So it's it's a good balance. Uh, as far as my strengths, um, I think I used to be really good uh, closer to release, and as time goes on, I'm getting better and better when it's kind of getting stale. But I still like, um, I still like, like it more when it's not. It's just maybe I, that's what I like and what I'm good at is my, might be two different things. Mm -hmm. Well. Um, I think a lot of players have, at least that I've spoken to, have preferred this uh, kind of 
point in a metagame. Um, uh, some players said it was a strength. Some players said, you know, they prefer a more solved meta. Uh, like Yarla, for example, obviously loves the solved metas. Because um, of his refined control decks. A connoisseur. Yeah, of yeah. The he, he likes the solved EU meta where everyone is just too stubborn to not bring Bomb Warrior. Yep, that's exactly what he likes. Uh, and capitalizes it and qualifies to Worlds uh, based yeah. off of it. Uh, but talking about the other players at Worlds, um, what are your thoughts on the other seven? Because just a couple weeks ago, we had the uh, uh, eighth final player since uh, China had their ecosystem finish up late. Uh, Xiao Ti will, will join uh, you in the other six. Uh, what are your thoughts overall on the, the players at Worlds? Um, I mean, Bloody Face, obviously, he's been there three years in a row. There's not much else to say about it. Uh, he's very consistent. Then Yarala has been there for a very, very long time, and he's always been close. I, I Kind of similar to me, but even probably a little bit higher. And as far as the others, I, I don't really know them that well, as far as how good they play. Um, I was, I'm always asleep while uh, Asia Pacific is playing for GM, so I don't know really about uh, Glory and Bank Yugi. And I don't know much about the China system either. So, I mean, I know that... I, I've heard that both players from China are like probably favorite to win because they're like super super strong, so I believe that. Um, uh, and Silver Name, Silver Name's kind of a wild card. He's kind of I think that's gonna be my round one opponent, and that I'm really scared of Silver Name. I don't, I'm not sure why. I don't know if that's, but yeah. That, I guess that's uh, what I have to say about all of them. It's because they printed another Yogg-Saron, perhaps. Uh, that you're afraid people of should be scared of me for that uh, i suppose yeah we do have that clip that we played i'm pretty sure a hundred times yeah uh, i played one yogs and two. then it that's what i was known for forever yeah that slight little smirk on your face that's what the comedian is based off of yeah because uh for most people that watched that that was funny it was it was yeah it um, wasn't for a uh, dude uh 7597's fans but uh no or, or dude 7597 himself. No, true. Uh, because we haven't seen him since then. <laughs> no, he kind of disappeared after that. Yeah, you yogged him out of competitive Hearthstone. I'm sorry. That's that's an impressive feat. I don't say sorry to me. I say sorry to dude. I'm sorry to uh, him and the, his fans. <laughs> Years later, still apologizing. <laughs> um, so. Uh, this might be a tough one, but who do you think is the front runner, uh, the favorite to win the world championship in in your mind? I know you said you have limited knowledge of uh, uh, Asia Pacific and, and Chinese players, but can I go you with know, myself? What you heard, you can absolutely go with yourself. I mean, I should do that. Um, but then you have to give who would be the runner up. Who would you end up beating in the finals? If you answer uh, yourself, bloody face. Okay. Ah, oh, yes. You're you're like the first person that's had regional pride. And because I'm yeah. obviously biased towards America's players, that makes me feel good that you just want that you think you're going to win. You think Bloody Face is going to get second. That would solidify America's as their rightful spot as the best region in Hearthstone. Exactly. People don't say it enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I say it all the time. Yeah. Um, but yes, other people don't say it enough, and I think they need to say it uh, because it's true. And uh, you know my. Um, my thoughts going into the world championship i think whoever wins they're the best region right yeah obviously okay and we we, we, we definitely should not take into consideration whatever happened in the master stores nope nope uh Just once. yeah uh because you know it, things get muddied up with nine Swiss rounds and then a top eight cut right that's just too much hearthstone right yeah you exactly. know, two days a succinct tournament Single in top four. That's how you decide a best player. Who's better right then and there? Exactly. That hour. That's going to um, determine everything. That determines everything. That determines the best region. So I'm glad we're on the same page on this. Yeah. Um, all right. One more question. And this will probably be the hardest question I ask you. Um, or maybe not, depending on how much you like yourself. Why should people root for you at the World Championship? Oh, uh. Well, if you're a Canadian, uh, I'm I'm Canadian. That's how I root for people at Olympics. Um, uh, so there's that. <clears throat> um, That's a good one. 
Other, other than that, I don't really know. Uh, if you don't like the others, then I'm the least worst sometimes. Um, maybe you identify to something I represent, like uh, hats and quarantine hair, or uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Oof. You can root for I'm... whoever you want. If 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 I'm the underdog, I'm fine with that as well. Uh, all right. Well, I I think you've made a very strong case. If you Thank like you. hats in Canada, yeah, you know exactly who to root for at home. It's Monsanto because he represents both of them. Oh, also, I speak French, and uh, so everyone who speaks French, right, they love me. Oh, that's. I mean, that might even be bigger than Canada. Yeah. French speakers. All right. Well, you sold me, Monsanto. I'll be rooting for you. Nice. Thank you. I haven't told everybody that, I promise. <laughs> nice. Uh, but that's all the questions I had for you, man. Uh, so I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and interview. And uh, good luck at the World Championship. Thank you. And for those out there who want to check out the World Championship, it's happening on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Hearthstone Esports, on December 12th and 13th. Also, you can have all the updates and promotional content surrounding our world's players over on our Twitter uh, at HS Esports. Or if you want to check out more about the ecosystem or detailed bios about the players, you can head over to playhearthstone.com slash esports. <laughs>